Hey everyone, Mucklick Douglas Bartholomew Reginald Esquire the fourth here, and this is a guide to all strikes in the end of dragons. Now let's get to the point. Etherblade's hideout. Talk to my trend when you're ready to begin. Red lines are bad. Interrupt anything that has a break bar. Red cones are bad. She summons fragile scarlet clones, kill them all, then back on my. When you all get red circles on you, spread out until it's over. The next clone phase, she will still have the fragile scarlets, kill them first, they are glass cannons, then there will be one with a a lot of health or a lot of break bar for you to focus down. When you get my trend to 10%, phase 2 will begin. Scarlet will pulse constant small bullets which do torment and minor damage. You can stack up and heal through that. When she swirls circles around her, you can either heal through it or dodge backward then forward to avoid all the damage if you're nervous. When she raises her arms to slam down, there will be a shock wave you can jump over. Periodically, one player will get a lightning beam on them. They need to run out of the group and then they will drop a lightning circle that does massive damage if you walk into it. It will persist for a short time. At 60 and 20% three safe areas will spawn and start rotating. A sniper will appear and blast through two of the three safe zones. If you get hit by the snipe, you're dead. If you're not in the beam or a safe zone when the snipe fires, you're downstate. If you're in the correct safe zone when it fires, you're fine. I recommend standing in the dead center of the room until you see which safe zone will be the correct one, then run into it before the shot fires, as opposed to the pick a circle and pray strategy that might group tried. Repeat these mechanics until the boss is at zero to win. The second strike, Zunlai Jade Junkyard. Run in and start fighting Anka. Red circles are bad. Three people will sometimes get red circles, have them run out and drop them, then come back. One player will periodically get chased by a lich. They need to kite it away from the group. If it reaches you, it will downstate you. Anka will sometimes summon a larger red circle that will vacuum you towards it. Fight against the pull. This is her highest damaging ability and it will kill you fast. At 75%, she flees. The red circles she drops behind her hurt. Be patient if you have to be. She will sometimes summon three adds that need to be CC'd. They are marked on the minimap. When she summons the worms, they will all do a donut-shaped AOE shortly after. At 40%, she runs again, same as before. She will start summoning slow adds that move across the battlefield with large circles around them. They have the same vacuum mechanic, don't get pulled in. Do the mechanics on repeat until she's dead. Seriously, don't get pulled in by those vacuums. Kainang Overlook Strike, the third one. Run in, take the zip line up to the boss. He's a blade sworn, he hits very slowly, but very, very hard. All red areas and red lines are bad. If someone goes down, revive them quick. He will periodically put numbers on people's heads. Those people need to back away and get by the wall. He will hit them in the order of the numbers on their head. If that person is still next to the boss, it will downstate them and everyone near them. If they move away, it doesn't hurt much. At 66%, he pushes you to the lower area. Here you fight a ritualist, an enforcer, and a mind blade. If the enforcer and mind blade are too close together, they buff up a lot. I recommend killing the enforcer first. The mind blade will lock onto someone, allowing that person to kite it away. Kill the ritualist second, and the mind blade last. Red areas are bad, the blue fire is bad. If you get a red circle on you, run it away from the group. After the last of those three is down, zip line back up to Lee. He will now do two mechanics at once. Red circles on everyone, so you have to spread out and also a red area on 90% of the platform. Spread out, dodge roll the large red area, then return to him after the circles detonate. Don't be shy about using a dodge when he's about to dash, it does a lot of damage. He will still do the numbers on people's heads thing, so get used to that. At 33%, he pushes you down for another ad phase, a mech and a sniper. The health of the two is periodically equalized, so he found it easiest to focus on the mech, which almost never moves, whereas the sniper runs all over the place. Although you can zipline up to the sniper, we just ignored her and healed through her damage and DPS down the mech first, then her last. Red areas are bad, also the mech does the numbers on people's heads thing, and then hits them each with a shotgun punch, so have those people spread out when you see it. A small note, when the mech does the large Kamehameha beam, the hitbox of it also slightly surrounds the mech. We had people die that didn't look like they were in the beam, but they were too close. When both of these are dead, you can go back up to Lee. He has all previous mechanics and also a green circle. Stack in green circle unless another mechanic is preventing you from doing it. Get him to zero to win. Harvest Temple, strike number four. Okay, this one is a few 
steps above the others in terms of coordination it requires of your team. Here we go. Phase one, run in, assign two people to pushing and everyone else don't touch the big orb. The other eight people kill the dark blobs creeping toward the orb. If any blob reaches it, a massive explosion will occur. The pushers push the large orb into the white circles. After three pushes, it will turn rainbow. Everyone CC the orb. Note, if the orb hits the outer edge of the arena, it will reset to the middle and do a massive explosion as if a blob had reached it. Jormag phase. Stack up near the boss, DPS them down, red areas are bad. If you all get red circles, spread out until they detonate. If two of you get the large red circles, drop them away from the group then return. The ads are nothing too threatening here, kill them whenever you have time. Note the black orb in the middle. This is a pseudo enrage mechanic. It will slowly expand, filling more space. Each second you touch it, you get a stack of influence of the void for a couple of minutes. If you go above 10 stacks, you're mind controlled and attack your party. They can downstate you, then revive you to snap you out of it, but you'll still have the 10 or more stacks and be easily mind controlled repeatedly going forward. Don't touch the black orb's auras. Primordis phase. He will do a massive chomp on the platform coupled with a spread out mechanic. Afterward, he will boop the platform with his chin three times, then reset back to the chomp. We just stacked up near his left side for most of the phase, except for when we had to run out. Cleave the fire adds whenever time allows. Kraukatoric phase. He will fire two beams, then one beam, repeating. Bring the scorpions to the group and AoE them down. Keep moving to wherever he fired the last beam. Red circles run out. Orb pushing phase again. DPS, kill the mini boss. There's a lot of annoying AoE in this one from Mordremoth and Zaitan. After you get the orb to the first white circle, it will leave Zaitan death juice on the ground. It will kill you. Use a ranged pusher at this point. After two white circles, CC the orb to kill it. Mordremoth phase. He will spit projectiles. There are safe spots between them. He will then do a spread out mechanic plus jump over three shock waves. You can DPS during this if you are within range. Note, if you get pushed off the edge, you will get teleported back up, but you will be downstate. Zaitan phase. He summons three giants. The giants will spit the death juice puddles that kill you fast. Be very careful. Zaitan will occasionally do a massive AoE that fears and does many conditions. You can dodge roll this. You don't need to run all the way across the platform. Once the giants are dead, focus on Zaitan. Those little worms will just spawn forever. Next is another orb pushing phase, but the salt spray dragon will interfere. Focus on killing it first. Also, you have to play Frogger at the same time. Watch out for the other dragon orbs. After two white circles, CC the orb to kill it again. Bubbles phase. Yep, there's more. When she raises her arm, you want to dodge it. It is a massive slam and then a shockwave. Red is bad. There is a lot of red. The tail will occasionally start a shockwave from the middle of the room. You can just space bar jump over this one. At 50%, the void amalgamate spawns in the middle of the room. You need to kill it, but if you push it into the edge of the arena, it explodes. You need to DPS it from different sides without pushing it into a wall. <laughs> yup. The bullets don't hit you while in downstate, so revives and bandaging is possible in this phase. When you kill the orb successfully, phase 11 starts. <laughs> You thought this was over? Ignore the new ad, focus on the boss. Even with four people alive, we were able to finish this before the new ad became a problem. The little fire patches, the little ads, and the moving orbs were annoying, but not lethal. The red circles you need to run out, and the main boss's attacks are lethal, so respect those the most. Once you get Bubbles health to zero, phase 12 starts. I'm kidding, it's, it's over. It's finally over. With that, your group should be able to clear all End of Dragon Strike missions. If you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting the like button for the YouTube algorithm, leave a comment with any tips and tricks, and subscribe for more content. Happy striking!